I wanted to take a day to process this, but we really have to talk about it. Was Shay robbed? Let's talk about it. Listen, if you're new to the channel, it's your boy PK from the Windy City Breeze. This is PK Talks NBA. You know what to do. You hit that bell, hit like, hit subscribe. Let's get into the topic. Uh, Jokic has won another MVP. And I'm not going to sit there and say that Nikola Jokic did not deserve to be in that conversation. He absolutely deserved to be in that conversation. Now, did he deserve to win it over some of his peers and contemporaries in this particular voting? Absolutely not. And that's not hate. I don't want this to be an anti-Jokic video. This is definitely a... Shea got robbed and deserved his just due type situation. And I'm going to break down to you why. One, we typically say that the MVP award goes into the best team with the best player on the best team, realistically, is what that kind of sums up. Best player on the best team typically gets the MVP award. Well, this season, if you're not going to have Jason Tatum in that in that topic, because Boston Celtics definitely have one that have the best record, this, that, and the other, then you have to go into the Western Conference and you have to look at Shea. Number one in Western Conference, by the way, number one in Western Conference, youngest team to do so. The average age on that, they are the youngest team to do, not just this season, not just not just in the modern, in history, youngest team to do so. And Shea is actually, I think, if he did not lead the league in points, he definitely is up there to a top four. Like, seriously, if you talk about top plot five players in the game, Shea's name comes up right now. This season, it definitely did. And they have one of the best records in the league. It's number two overall, number one in the Western Conference. And there's nothing else you can say. To him. So, tip, so that in itself put him in that conversation. And just based off that criteria alone, it's like, okay, all right, we check that box. Uh, top four, offense and defense. I'm going to say that again. The Oklahoma City Thunder are top four on offense and defense. So this is not a situation where you have someone who is not contributing on both ends because it's not as if they just have one defensive juggernaut and then everyone else is, is, is slacking off. Or they have one defensive juggernaut and the, the perimeter sucks. No, Shea actually as an individual ranks pretty high as a perimeter defender. He also ranks pretty freaking high as a from guard play on the offensive side as well. When you have it being done on both ends of the floor, he is actually in that conversation. He's killing the both ends. People would say, and you can argue, that Jokic is not a great post defender or a great defender for his position. Now, I'm not sitting there to say that he's a bad one. I know that there's some 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 apologists or there's some people who are going to sit there and make it seem as if I'm trying to slander him. I'm not trying to do that at all. But the reality of it is, when you compare it from that metric, Shea is a better player all the way around. Now, that's kind of hard to say when you sit there and look at the fact that Jokic does – like average nearly a triple double. He has like these really he does a lot. I'm not gonna sit there and make it seem like he doesn't lie. And for his position, what he does is kinda unheard of. So I'm not gonna make it seem as if again Jokic did not deserve to be in this conversation. But for what Shea has accomplished in some of the historical president that was set, it's like, hey, you can't deny that because realistically, you may not see too many people if you in in recent history or in the in upcoming future accomplish what Shea has accomplished by the way uh over 50 over 40 games with 30 plus points over 30 games with 30 plus points in zero to and less than three turnovers something that has only been accomplished by one other person who wore number 23 for the Chicago Bulls yeah that yeah yeah he's putting himself in rare air right there so when you have all of these things, you have a number one in the in your conference, youngest to do that. You have a, a, your team both at best at uh, top four defense and offense. Something that the Nuggets the Nuggets are, you know, they're good defenses. Don't get me wrong, but if no one's sitting there looking at Jokic as a lockdown center, it ain't happening, right? And then when you look at everything else that can materialize with this, there's enough case there to say, hey, this kid was robbed. And that actually brings on a better question. How did the NBA get this so wrong? Two people were honestly, you know, robbed. Wimby was robbed of defensive player of the year. I like Rudy Gobert. I actually am. I, I love what the Minnesota Timberwolves have put together. I actually want them to go to the finals. That's the team I picked. No hate on Shea. I know that's how we started this video off. But the NBA and the voting metric got that wrong. Wimby came out led Rudy Gobert in every 
major defensive category. Had most Rudy Gobert has had seven games with seven blocks or more in his entire career. Wimby did it in a season. Let that marinate. Wimby accomplished something that took the DPOY, let's say a 10-plus year career. I think it's about 10 years for Rudy. He did it in his first season. Now, one can sit there and say, well, because the rest of his defense was poor, that means that he he had all this opportunity. But, I mean, have you all seen the Timberwolves? I mean, it's not making it seem like Cat was necessarily the best defender. He was always in foul trouble, very a, a head case in some respect. They really needed that defensive anchor, and it's actually why they spent so much to get him. They were missing that. So it's not as if they were just hands and shoulders above everybody before they get Rudy. Rudy is a difference maker. Rudy is a game changer. Wimby can't control everything else that's around him right now, but as an individual, which is what it is, defensive player of the year, as an individual, he's a better defender than Rudy. The statistics show it. Everything shows it. And we just totally rob we robbed two young guys of the chances to potentially make history. Like the envy for him to win MVP, Shay, for Shay to win MVP at with the youngest team, this, that, and the other, it would be like a history making thing. Like you could stamp it. No one's done this since Shay SGA. That's what we would be saying. For Wimby, it would be a history thing. He literally would be one of, I think, if not the, just or or a second, but it's a history defining thing. Like seriously, he's rookie of the year, defensive player of the year. That is a huge accomplishment. You only get to be a rookie once, unless you're Blake Griffin. You only get to be a rookie once, unless you're Ben Simmons. Like seriously, you can't, you can't, you don't get, you don't get another chance. And so they robbed them of that accomplishment, and that's a sad thing to say. But I want to hear your thoughts. Do you feel like SGA was robbed? Do you why? Tell me why. Tell me why you think so. And at the end of the day, how did the NBA get this wrong? Let's talk about it. Whether it's love, whether it's hate, I put. Whether it's love, whether it's hate, I'll be in the chat. Put it in the chat. I'll be in there with you. Till next time. Peace.